certainly we're glad to be in the house of the Lord once again and listen to Zion's songs and for the proclamation of God's holy word and to acknowledge that he blessed us in so many ways. I want to call your attention today to the gospel as recorded by Luke chapter 14. I want to begin reading from Luke chapter 14 verse 15 from the New King James Version. Now when one of those who sat at the table with him heard these things, he said to him, Blessed is he who shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. Then he said to him, A certain man gave a great supper and invited many, and sent his servant at supper time to say to those who were invited, Come, for all things are now ready. But they all with one accord began to make excuses. That's chapter 14 of the Gospel as recorded by Luke, verses 15 through 18, the A clause. I want to reason with you today with the subject the Great Supper, the Great Supper, and the full text will be Luke chapter 14 verses 15 through 24, Luke chapter 14 verses 15 through 24 although I read just a few of those verses. The Great Supper. Three main points we want to emphasize. The first one being the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. And point number two, the invited guests, the invited guest, and three, accepting the offer, accepting the offer. Jesus had been invited uh, to a supper, or as some translation would say, a banquet. And it was at the house of a ruler of the Pharisees. And when guests were invited to uh, an occasion like this, normally there was a certain seating arrangement according to the honor of each guest. The more honorable ones, of course, would be seated close to the front and oftentimes near the host and, of course, particularly near a guest speaker. Jesus noticed, as recorded some in the previous chapter,
chapter and at the beginning of chapter 14, which are, is our text today, that some of the people that arrived early uh, took the best seats. And Jesus informed them in his teaching that when one goes somewhere, they should not necessarily just go and take the best seats. As my parents used to teach me, it's better to be asked up than to be asked down. So one should wait until the host or whoever the host has appointed in charge of the supper or the banquet to allow you to sit in the seat that they have prepared for you. Uh, not only did this seem to offend some of the guests, because this was at the house of a ruler of the Pharisees. And it appeared that the Pharisees were always trying to bring accusations against Jesus and to find some way to, if you will, trick him and to accuse him of breaking the law. And they did not seem to understand that Jesus wasn't going to break the law. He just wanted to refute some of the actions and the behavior of the Pharisees that had added traditions to the law. And they were more concerned about uh, their traditions than they were of the word of God. Jesus also gave some teaching to the host and he informed the host that when you invite people to a special occasion like this, you should not always invite those friends of yours, those influential, those rich or the wealthy because they are able to reciprocate, if you will, and invite you or uh, to give you the same honor or even the same resources that you've given them. That's why he said sometimes you need to invite the, the lame, the crippled, the uh, poor, and those that lame and crippled and poor that are not among the influential that are invited, it shows that you weren't invited for a selfish reason. It shows that uh, you have treasures laid up in heaven for ministering to all of God's people. These two lessons that I mentioned led up to uh, this message about the Great Supper. Jesus gave instructions on attitudes and behaviors uh, when he was a guest at the house of a ruler of the Pharisees. The instructions on who and why you should give invitations led to a statement, blessed is he who shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. And this led to a parable given by Jesus when he said a certain man gave a great supper 
invited many. Jesus is mentioned of the resurrection of the just, which was in the instructions to the host, no doubt sparked the thought of end times or eschatology, the coming kingdom of God. It was widely believed that the messianic age, the consummation of time or the close of the salvation process would be ushered in by a great supper or banquet. The statement, blessed is he who shall eat bread in the kingdom of God, seemed to be a, an idle assumption that he would have a seat at the table. Or maybe it was no more than a cliché. Cliché is a phrase which is overused, often shows a lack of original thought often lacking sincerity and spiritual basis. Like phrases we hear in our day. Praise the Lord. Too blessed to be stressed. Baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost. Sometimes these are not sincere statement and have no spiritual basis. Just something someone says or a cliche. Jesus took the opportunity to emphasize that many of the guests at this supper would not be in God's kingdom and reflected back on what I just said about the cliches. Oftentimes, people that make those statements aren't truthful because the devil is sometimes having a field day in their lives. And they want to try to fool folk to thinking they are pious and, and that the Lord is blessing them and they have such a great relationship with God and they're on fire for the Lord. As I suppose stated, Jesus took the opportunity to emphasize that many of the guests at this supper would not be in God's kingdom. In their places would be given uh, to outcasts and even Gentiles. Why? Because the oracles of God were given to the Jew first. And because a large number of Jews rejected the Christ and his word. Then it was opened up to those that were considered, particularly by people like the Pharisees, outcasts, and even to Gentiles. The host in the parable invited many guests However, all those invited began to give excuses. Have you accepted the invitation? If not, what is your excuse today? Are you in the crowd perpetrating with a cliché? As Peter stated in 2 Peter 1 and 10, have you made your call and election sure? The NIV states, therefore, my brothers and sisters, make every effort 
to confirm your calling and election. For if you do these things, you will never stumble, which is literally saying you will not be tripped up. The King James uses the term rather than stumble, that you will not fall. There were excuses made. Uh, one said he needed to see about a recently purchased field. Another said he needed to try out recently purchased oxen. And the third one said he needed to be about seeing about his newly acquired bride. Number one and two uh, emphasizes that they were fools and not using wisdom and understanding because who would purchase a field before you went to look at it ahead of time. And who would buy a yoke of oxen and go and try them out after you've already paid for them? And number three, needed to understand as needed to be understood by one and two. There is no excuse for turning down the invitation that comes from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm sure that some of these excuses seem adequate to the ones that made them and maybe even to some of those that heard them. But I want to point out today that no excuse is adequate not to receive Jesus' invitation. And not even family should be put ahead of the commitment and cause of Christ. The host became angry and commanded that people in the streets and in the alleys of the town, the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame be invited. Jesus was referring to those in the Jewish community who were considered inferior and ceremonially unclean as with the man that Jesus healed at this feast. He healed the man uh, pretty early in his visit to the feast, or his answer to the feast, that had a disease called dropsy, that would perhaps today be called a demon by swelling in the joints and in Bible days sometimes there was a swelling even in the face the legs and the ankles Jesus had healed this man that had dropsy he had just healed him in verses 2 through 4 when the host was told that there was still room for more. He commanded that others be invited from the roads and out in the countryside and in the lanes, highways and byways. These outside of the city were probably Gentiles outside the covenant community the host then declared 
that none of those originally invited with those flimsy excuses would get a taste of his suffering. This group rather referred to those who had rejected Christ as recorded in chapter 13, verses 13, 34 through 35. And as I forestated, no excuse is adequate for refusing Jesus' kingdom, for our destiny rests on our response to his invitation. And I want to declare today, just in case there's someone here that did not know it, there is still room at the cross. And as the hymn says, long as I live, when trouble rises, I'll hasten to his throne. I love the Lord. He bowed his ear and chased my griefs away. There is still room at the cross, and the invitation is still being given. This feast might refer to the marriage feast of the Lamb as recorded in Revelation 19 and 9. So what I'm saying that we all have an invitation to his feast and we need to make the right type of response. But going back to Calvary, he made a way and it all happened at Calvary, where he died a shameful death. Where he cried out, it's finished. And where he asked the Father to forgive those that afflicted him, for they do not what they do. Yes, Jesus is coming back. And I'm looking forward to the day that he'll come back for the church. Yes, if you believe it today, one time with me, say yes. One more time, say yes. Yes, I will trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. Till I know the church is over. By letter of Christian experience. Or candidates for baptism.
powerful message from Pastor Jenkins. We pray that you have been blessed. My name is Sister Felicia Jenkins, and we invite you to join us each week for timely messages from God. We realize that these are difficult times we're living in. If you have a special prayer request, please connect with us through our website. We also ask that you partner with Mount Olive by planting a financial seed to help spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. May God bless you and keep you is our prayer.